phone, you check your emails, you get ready, put on that iron shirt, get to work, more emails, meetings, projects, your manager, deadlines, you come back home and there are probably more emails and meetings awaiting you. Sleep, wake up, repeat. Sleep, wake up, repeat. And this would go on year after year after year. And this was my life for almost 10 years. And the only silver lining that it happened to be with one of the best employers on the planet. And so on most days, instead of the iron shirt, shorts and a t-shirt would do as well. Right? And uh, generally, you didn't have much to complain about when you spent 10 years at Google. But even then, I just felt something was missing. Right now, I'm not here, before I get started, I'm not here to tell you, do the regular corporate bashing, give you cliched stories of how I quit my 9 to 5 job to pursue my passion. But what I'm actually here to tell you is quite the opposite. What I want to tell you is what it took for me to leave a dream workplace like Google to go on to pursue another dream. Right? And the latter could not have happened if not for the former. So, so here goes. Like, it was in, in 2008 when I left Bangalore for the first time. I moved to Hyderabad. It was supposed to be a one-year plan and then an MBA. Uh, we all do that. My parents sitting here were witness to that plan. One year and an MBA eventually went on to becoming a 10-year plan and obviously no MBA, right? But these 10 years at Google were the most defining years of my life, right? It gave me a lot more than I could have ever imagined. The Navneet Krishna that walked in and the Navneet Krishna that walked out were two very different people. It gave me a lot personally, it gave me a lot professionally, and more importantly, it helped me find my calling as well. And when I say it helped me find something personally, well, I found Deepthi there, my wife, and uh, funnily enough, it is true when they say that Google helps you find your answers, right? <laughs> so, it was um, in one of these days in my Google tenure that I happened to hold the mic for the first time in front of an audience very much like this. And you know what the event was? It was a fun do manager event. You make fun of your managers, and give away fun awards. Now tell me which other company you can do that, right? And that was what I was doing. It was fantastic, came out well. That led to me doing another event, and then another, and then another. Did some interviews. I started to commentate internal sports events. And suddenly, I started to realize I like holding the mic. And through all these years, school, college, and then Google, there was one thing that was constant in my life. Much like many of you sitting here, millions in this country, and that was cricket, right? And the words of Ravi Shasti, for example, in the center would echo in my, in my mind like, Namaskara Bengaluru, it is toss time here at the Chinnaswamy Stadium. India versus Pakistan, and the atmosphere here is absolutely electrifying. How many of you can resonate with these words? You all can, right? Yeah. And that kept playing, and suddenly, so I obviously came to a point when I realized I wasn't good enough to be playing the game, but I liked cricket, I liked holding the mic, and suddenly, it felt like this is what I want to be doing. I want to be a cricket presenter. And that started off my journey. Right? And one fine Saturday morning, the agenda for that Saturday morning was for me to wake up and prepare for a Google interview that I was applying for a different role but eventually went on to becoming me and my wife contemplating life for two and a half hours. And basically, the crux of the matter was, we said, if not now, then when, right? We're going to get to live in this bubble if we want to, as long as we want to, but we decided to take matters into our own hands. And we took what is probably the toughest and the biggest decision yet. We took the plunge. I quit Google, right? And as they say, the rest is history. These 18 months have been a roller coaster for me in every sense of the word. Several highs, several rows, plenty of rejections, but more importantly, some of the biggest life lessons that I've taken away. And I'm going to take this opportunity to run you through a few of them. Yeah? The first one, the power of visualization. This has to be the most powerful of them all, right? We all have that image in our mind Something that tells us, that visualizes where we want to be, what we want to be doing. Every single one of us have that image and it keeps popping up every now and then. I have that image. Each and every one of you have that image as well. And in most cases, 
that one image will be your guiding light. That one image will more or less dictate how you want to be doing things. And in reality, it's that one image that will make this dream a reality. I have that image, you have that image. We just need to keep asking that question. What was that image for me? You know what they say about keeping your dreams limitless, not putting them in a box? Ironically, my dreams were limitless, but it happened to be in a box. The commentary box, <laughs> right? So no surprises. And when I was watching cricket through all these years, right, every time the camera would move to the commentary box, there was something in me, that voice that said, you can do this. You want to be doing this. Right? I grew up idolizing the likes of Harsha Bogle, Ravi Shastri, Tony Gregg. We've heard all of them, yeah? Of course, right? And there was the little thing that every time my wife would see the commentary box, and she's like, why aren't you there? Aren't you supposed to be there? So we had this little thing going on as well, so it just kept growing on me, right? And that was that image for me. And that gave me some sort of direction. It made it clear. It sort of gave a path to me, right? And I, speaking about Harsha Bogle, well, this happened quite recently. I had the opportunity to, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the man himself, and uh, he had a few good things to say. Um, he apparently said I have more swag than him, so I'm, I, I will take that compliment. But I'm just coming back to the point. The point being, what is that image? We all have that image, and it's only a matter of just constantly questioning that. So that's number one. Number two. Just do it. I'm obviously not here to promote any sporting company, <laughs> right? When was the last time you did something for the first time? We've heard that line, yeah? And when we actually put that into use, we'll realize how impactful that line is. Every single one of us are guilty of deliberation, are guilty of contemplation, and we don't take action. And the second we realize when we take action, it's actually a lot easier than we think it is, right? And it almost feels like this is how it was supposed to be. It was meant to be this way, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. We start small, we start scrappy. We live in that what will people think generation. We'll keep that aside. We really don't need to. Because when you start taking action and stop deliberating, you'll start realizing the beauty of this, the byproduct of taking action. You start getting opportunities from avenues you absolutely didn't know existed, right? And much later on, much later on in your journey, when you connect the dots backwards, you'll realize that the best thing that you did was actually taking action, right? And that's why this is so powerful. It's as simple as it is, just do it. But I started to realize that. And I had plenty of firsts in my journey in the last 18 months as well. And one of the biggest firsts that I had, and I'm glad I took that call at that time, about a year back before the IPL, was I said, I'm going to put out a YouTube channel and create cricket content. Not for anybody, for myself, right? That was the first. I never thought I would put myself out to the open, to the public, but I did that. There was apprehension, I got over it and I did that. So I did something called as quick single where I do bite-sized information on cricket. And that is what led to another opportunity. And then another, and then another. And I keep asking myself, how did I get this? Maybe it's because I just took some action and that has been my biggest learning. Right? I went on to emceeing a wonderful school event and then the Karnataka Premier League. A little story over here. A few years back, I went and approached them. They didn't know who I was. Right? Obviously, I didn't get the role. And this one, they reached out to me saying, go ahead and do it. Right? So these are the small turnarounds that actually do happen. Right? So the biggest learning for me, and I'm sometimes still guilty of contemplation and deliberation, and I'm still learning, progressing on that journey, but I think the biggest learning is we just got to take action. Right? None of us live perfect lives. We all have challenges, we all have obstacles, plenty of rain, the occasional thunderstorm as well, right? It's not going to be easy. We are on our own in many ways. There's no manager, no project, no deadlines. Sounds like the perfect world. Actually not. The lack of structure, the ambiguity is what is going to get to you. It's going to be challenging. Self-motivation, that's going to be put to test. Right? And you suddenly realize that you're getting rejected. Not once, not twice. You get re you're getting rejected constantly. You're disappointed, you're dejected. And over time, you start to learn from these rejections, right? And you start to get rejected. And 
you're a nobody in this new field. And you start to wonder whether your self-respect is being compromised in the process. You're trying to get time from people, you're messaging them, they don't respond. You're trying to call people, hoping to get some time with them in person. They don't know who you are, why will they give you time? So they your calls go unanswered, right? And all of this happens and over time you get through this journey of rejection and you start to realize that you can learn a lot in the process as well, right? That's one, you get used to rejection, we just need to stay patient through those rainy days. It will happen, right? And you also, when you put yourself out in the public to the open, you have the hate of the internet as well, right? People, if you're gonna take the positives of what people say, you very well be ready to take the criticism as well. And we live in a wonderful, empowered world where everyone can say anything that they want to. And we have people who are superstitious as well. I have people telling me this. Apparently, why RCB is losing is because of me. <laughs> right? Look at this. Please remove this person who's hosting 12th man. I think he is unlucky. Right? We won't miss the nags. At least we were winning a few matches back then. Right? You start, you start getting messages like this. What do you do with this? How do you handle this? Then, you have different kind of people as well. People who would say something like this. Exactly, that was, that was my reaction. That was my reaction on day one, that was my reaction on day two. And then you start realizing that I'm laughing at it just the way you guys are laughing at it. Literally, over time, overnight, you're gonna get through these phases. You will learn very quickly how to handle. There are things that you will observe, there are things that you will deflect, right? But we have to stay patient during times when things are tough. There were times when I would sit in my house when nothing was working out, staring into outer space, and nothing is happening. And the dreaded question in my mind, will it work out? My wife is at work, and I'm sitting there at home trying to figure out what I need to do. I don't know who to talk to, how to go about things, and we will have those days. Those are the rainy days that we need to be patient. We need to be patient, right? And one fine day, I even went to the Google Careers website as well. It's not like going back to Google is a bad thing. Most of us would, right? But in my mind, maybe there was some sort of escapism, right? So those are the tough days that we want to get through. And it is in one of these days, I'll tell you this as well, you will get an opportunity from nowhere. Suddenly you get a call, and suddenly life seems to be a perfect place. And you have answers to most of your questions. That's only because you took action, and you waited, and you were patient through the rainy days, right? So it is going to be tough, but we just need to hang in there. I think this is very important. Some of our speakers already alluded to this topic. None of us are alone in our journeys. Not me, not you, none of us. We don't need to assume that the world's responsibilities are on our shoulders, right? We have amazing people around us, people who we can seek help from, people who will add value to our lives, people who will give us direction, right? And if we don't seek help, we will not get it, right? Sometimes it's all bottled up in our mind, but we just let it open, speak to other people, and for all you know, we're, right on, the, we're on the right track, right? So just finding your mentors, maybe people who can add that value. I had my mentors at Google, and I have my mentors even now as well, people who can help me out in, based on the situation that I'm in, right? And Vineet Vincent is sitting right here. Some of you all obviously know Vineet Vincent, right? Yeah, despite the character that he is. So I happened to meet him at an event in, um, in Hyderabad where we co-hosted a summit, the Under 25 Youth Festival. And uh, little did I know at that time that the conversation that I'd have and the meeting that I'd have with him would actually lead to him adding so much value to my life. And every time after I quit Google, any question that I had, how do I do this, hand express, my, ha my hand movement, my expression, beneath how do I put up stuff on social media, blah, 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 I would just go on and on, and he would give me his answers, right? He started to add value, and I started to find such people. I have people like that in Singapore. I have people, I try to find people who I can bank on, people who can help me through this journey, right? And very often, I'm sure most of you will agree, when you all read books about some of the most successful people, and um, when you watch some of these documentaries about their lives as well, there's one thing that, there's that common denominator, and that is being grateful, right? And I kept wondering why, what is it being grateful, what is it? And I started to realize that I'm actually doing that in my day-to-day -day life as well. It automatically happens, you're just very thankful for who you are, for what you have, and for who you have. I have my parents sitting right here who have been most supportive, no matter what decision I've taken, despite everything else that's happening around us, right? So I thank them for everything. Right? And 
And there is someone sitting in Singapore who goes to work every single day, not enjoying what she's doing, but doing it just so that the two of us can go through this journey and make our dreams come true. And she's the one who keeps me accountable, and she's the one I'm pushing hard for. So the biggest thank you goes to my wife every single morning. Right? So we want to be thankful, grateful for who we have, find our mentors, we'll be fine. We'll absolutely be fine. Right? Let's just not assume that everything's on our minds. We have people around us to help us through it. Right? That leaves me with one last point. That's all I got to say. Every single bit of this is going to be worth it. And I can guarantee you that. Right? When you told me, if you, or rather, if you told me that one year after quitting Google, you're going to get back into that co coveted commentary box, I would have laughed at you. Cut to Nepal, 2018, December. I was making my debut as a broadcaster and commentator in the biggest cricket league in Nepal, sitting with former cricketers and making my debut. And that was a dream come true for me. And my wife sitting there in Singapore, watching me on TV for the very first time, goosebumps. That couldn't have made me happier, right? And that's what we live for. If you had told me that one and a half years after quitting Google, I'll be the face of RCB 12th Man TV talking to millions, being the voice of millions of RCB fans, I would have laughed at you. But guess what? It happened. <laughs> Little did I know, I'm going to be traveling with the team, talking to fans, talking to players, talking to coaches, creating content. I took a flight and I came here this morning because um, we were in Mumbai for the game. I'm taking a flight tonight back to Calcutta to, back, to be back with the team. Unfortunately, a dreadful season. We'll come to that a much later time. <laughs> How many RCB fans do we have here? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, feels, that was the best applause that I've wanted, right? So this will happen, right? And that same person who kept asking, why me? Why me? Why am I going through this? Is suddenly same, asking that same question, why me? How did I get this? Right? It's just how we look at it. We took action. We stayed through the rainy days. We took help from the people who could help us. And things will happen because it is these experiences that will get us through those tough days. And it is these experiences that will make it all absolutely worth it. That's all I have. I don't have too much more to say. I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just getting started. And if there's one thing that I want to tell you, I'm super excited with what life has to throw at me. And I can't be more prepared. It's going to be tough, but I'm very willing to give it everything that it needs. And the one thing that I want to leave you guys with is we all have that image in our minds. And if you're wondering whether you need to take action, do yourself a favor and just do it. Right on the stroke of buzzer, you guys have been a great audience. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.